What's the difference between setting to frame size and scaling to frame size? I'm Phil Ebner from videoschoolonline.com and I'm gonna show you the difference in this tutorial. So I'm in here in Premiere Pro and I have two clips on my timeline and you can see the size of these two clips. We have a beach shot that's 1920 by 1080 and then we have a drone shot which is 4K basically. And so this might be a situation you're in often when you have a video you're editing with multiple size aspect ratios or even if you're using images and your images that you bring in are really large compared to the video. So typically you have one or two options. You can go in and you could go to the video that is bigger or smaller than your sequence and you can go in and try to customize it and scale down the footage in the effects controls panel up here. Now that's cool and that's pretty easy, but there's a faster way and that's by right clicking your footage and choosing scale to frame size or set to frame size. So if we choose scale to frame size, which was sort of the original way in Premiere Pro to automatically scale your footage to the size of the frame of your sequence, look what happens. Well, it scales it down perfectly. So this video fits perfectly and it fills the frame exactly how I would want it to fill the frame. But the problem is this now, if I go into the video effects, the scale option is set to 100. So say I'm like, well, that's good that it scales to the frame size, but if I want to zoom in a little bit more because I shot in 4K, so I should be able to zoom in a little bit more, say I zoom into 150, for example, when I do that, it actually starts to pixelate. And that's because when I scale to frame size, it basically creates sort of a rasterized version of this video. So even if I go into like 200, for example, which I should kind of be able to do without losing too much resolution, then it doesn't look so great. So what I'm gonna do is actually, I'm going to go in and bring move that video clip to the right and bring in our video again so I can show you the difference when you set to scale size. So right now, this is at 100% scale without doing any scaling to frame size. And then I go to this other clip, which I just applied scale to frame size, increased to 200%, and it's hard for you to see because you're watching a video of this, but I can tell that it's much more pixelated. So instead, if I right click this video and choose set to frame size, it automatically makes this the size of our frame, but in our scale over here in the effects controls, we now see that the scale is set to 50. So we still have full control of zooming in or out without losing any resolution, unlike when you do the automatic scale to frame size. And that's why I think that it's better to ultimately use the set to frame size 99% of the time. So if you do want to go back in and adjust the scale or do some sort of scale animation and zoom in, then it's not going to get pixelated. This is very helpful for images. You can imagine that if you're doing some sort of Ken Burns style effect and you bring in an image and you want to quickly set it to the frame size and then also add a scale animation, you would want it to maintain the proper resolution without losing any of that resolution. And the benefit of this is that we can, if we have a sequence with a bunch of different size video clips and we want them all to match the frame size, you can literally select all of them, right click and choose set to frame size and it will automatically do it for all of the clips. Cool, so hopefully now you understand the difference between setting to scale size and scaling to frame size. If you still have any questions, make sure you hit me up in the comments below and let me know if you have any questions or thoughts. Well, I hope you really enjoyed this tutorial and if you did, please like and subscribe to the channel for more. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave them below in the comments. And if you're looking to take your skills to the next level, make sure you head over to videoschoolonline.com where we have premium courses, more free tutorials and articles, guides and all kinds of stuff that will help you become a better creator. Thanks so much for watching and have a beautiful day.